Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Kamara. Uh, thanks for the time today. How are you doing? Wait, John, you didn't get the first question? Come he's, on. He's doing video right now, so he's past the range. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, I like that jacket. What's the Thank where'd you. that one come from? Oh, this is me right here. You know, Usman84kg.com. Go ahead, click the link, get you a jacket. Nice new one. We're going big time now. You're starting yeah. your own clothing line. Yeah, of course. You got to start at something. You can't get punched in the face forever. There you go. Uh, obviously, this is a rematch people have wanted to see for a long time. Uh, it's been almost two years. How much do you think you've evolved since the first fight? Do you think you've kind of, I know you said you've lapped the division, but do you feel like you've lapped Colby in terms of skills? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm just in a place to where I understand what I do. I understand where I'm at. You know, early on in my career, it was like, oh, you live and fight. Literally, you're living fight to fight. So it's like, I got to survive. I got to win. I got to win. I got to win. I'm in a position now to where it's, you know, I just want to perform the best that I can. I want to ha continue to have these legendary performances because, you know, I have a lot less to go than where I've come from. So I um, want to make them memorable so my daughter and my kids can look back one day and say, wow, daddy, you did that? You know, so that, that's really what I care about right now. Um, and just this night, I mean, the teammates, obviously Justin and Rose, can you give us some insight into what the training for this has been like, and obviously you being the one that's going to look to try to close the show uh, for the team? Oh, it's, phen it's been phenomenal. I think um, in Jacksonville, the last fight I fought, it was, uh, it was, it was great. I wanted to I, – I wanted Rose on that card as well, and, you know, we were able to make it happen and, and – Obviously, you saw what we produced that night. But we felt a little incomplete. Yes, Justin was there, so it definitely helped us feel better. But we felt a little incomplete because we didn't get to watch that madman throw down. So, um, you know, as soon as, you know, this was a tentative date that we were looking at, um, I said, yo, how about we get Justin on that too? And, of course, our wonderful manager, Ali Abdelaziz, was able to try to make that happen for us. And for you guys, it's going to be a treat as well. And you're never short on confidence as it was, but to do what you did to Jorge Masvidal in the last fight, um, what did that do to just your self-belief and just you know not only knowing what you can do, but seeing it put into practice? A lot of this is, is, is manifestation and in, in the work that I've put in. You know, you, you put in a lot of work for years, like, and I, and I say it, and I know I say it, and it's kind of hard for people to imagine, but you know, I was putting in work when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was putting in work just to work, hoping that one day it's going to turn into something. And it eventually did. And of course, you visualize and you imagine all the things that you want to do. And I knew it. Right after that fight, I don't know if you guys ever saw, you saw the video on uh, Anatomy of a Fighter. You know, shout out to my man, Will Harris. Um, I was backstage and I was just unhappy. I was unhappy with the performances, like I mentioned earlier. I want to go out there and leave these performances to where when I'm done, I, I, I can look back and be happy with. And I was unhappy with that. I was like, no, you know, yes, it was tough because I took the fight on six days notice. And um, as hard as it is to believe, I went through more adversity than he did. But of course, mine wasn't published because I don't need to do all of that, you know. And going out there and still and performing like that, I just didn't feel like that was my best. So I wanted to right that wrong. So of course, I was confident. I knew what I was able to do. I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew what I was going to do. I manifested it. I saw it over and over, and trained it, practiced it, went out there and to uh, put an emphatic finish like that on for the people. It really let you guys know what I've been saying for years. You know, I'm the most vicious and most well-rounded welterweight there's ever been, and, um, and I think that proved it. You mentioned righting or wrong with Masvidal. What about Colby? Is there anything from that first fight that lingers with you that you want to correct in this one? He's obviously said a ton about the refereeing and claiming you fouled him and this and that and the other thing. Is there any of that with you that you are hoping to correct with this win? No, nothing lingered at all. I mean, you know, like uh, you guys saw the viral video of me and him uh, <laughs> talking when he turned red. Um, it, it's simple. It wasn't a decision. I finished you. And, um, of course, he, he did the best he could. I, I actually like the fact that, you know, he stuck with the excuses and he kept making the excuses because, again, it made you guys all want to see that again, right? And so, yeah, he did a wonderful job there. 
But um, he said, um, he's saying, oh, it's a fake eye poke when the masses watch you finger my eye. You know, <laughs> he, he said it, uh, uh, it wasn't a nut shot and I got five, it, I five, got five minutes. He grazed my cup. That's true. And of course, as a man, when you know when your cup gets grazed, you anticipate what's coming after that, that pain. And I was anticipating the pain, and then after about 30 seconds, you guys can go back and watch the video. Literally about 30 seconds, I'm like, yeah, that pain's not coming. Let's get, let's get the scrap. Let's get, let's go. And we continued on. And you saw that, the shot where I broke his jaw. Clean off, clean shot. He was holding his eye. Did you guys see that? He was holding his eye. He was complaining to the ref that he was an eye poke. And even the commentator, DC, was like, and that was a straight right hand right on the button. And he said it was his eye. So who was actually uh, claiming fouls here? You know, but at the end of the day, he's done a great job of getting the public to believe that. And, you know, I commend him for that. But for me, the right, the, the wrong that I want to write is just kind of, in that fight, I fought with emotion. Uh, as much emotion as I was willing to display is what I fought with. And um, which is why I think I obviously I got hit quite a bit. But... It was fun. I had fun. That, that lets you know that I got a little madman in me too. You know, I don't mind getting hit. But I would say I, I want to make it a little bit more flawless this time around. And two more quick ones. Um, how much do you just look forward to putting this man behind you? I assume if you beat him again, there will, won't be much talk about a third fight, at least for quite a while. So is that something that you are keen to have happen? Just no more Colby Covington being brought up to you. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know because now I'm in the business of uh, of pay per view. So um, I don't know if I want him to, that far back. You know, of course I want to go out there and uh, and stop him, but um, you know I want him to quickly make his way back so I can stop him again for a little bit more money. And last thing, I'm sure you're going to be asked about Hamza Chamaya plenty this week. Uh, I remember I interviewed you earlier this year. And I asked you about him before he had you know, to take all this time off. And you said, all respect to the guy, you showed no ill will. The fact that he seems to be getting a very quick push where you had to do nine fights before you got a title opportunity. What are your thoughts on him now? Is he someone that you see quickly coming on your radar? First and foremost, um, you know, he's done a tremendous job with the opposition that he's been presented with. You know, no shame in that. He's, he's, he's doing great. You know, I like it. I love all the hype that's being there. Like, let's all be honest, you know, life is not fair. You know, we learn that as kids, you know. Life isn't fair, so I know, you know, some guys get a faster push, some guys don't. But it is what it is, you know, uh, more power to him. You know, he's doing a phenomenal job with the position that he's being put in. So, you know, hats off to him. As far as me, um, you know, I'm at a point in life to where I'm starting to understand, you know, how much this takes from me. And, you know, I've been nine weeks now away from my daughter. And, you know, FaceTime does help, but it doesn't do it justice, you know, as far as being there each and every day. So, you know, obviously I don't, I don't know how much longer I'm willing to do this, you know. Um, they have to make sense for me now. So if he's able to get there, then, you know, we'll talk about it at that point. Come on right here. Uh, first of all, is your knuckle okay? See if yeah. No, it's okay. You know, when you when you wrestle and you scrap a lot, you might get a scratch here and there. And, you know, of course, you got to pull a bandage so you don't bleed all over everything. And before Israel uh, rematched Marvin Vittori, he kind of pointed to your fight against Jorge where you didn't have to take that fight. You just you still took it to, to answer the questions. And he viewed that as starting the second lap, which he's now doing. So is this the start of the second lap for you around this division against Colby? The start? <laughs> I'm running. I'm sprinting past these dudes. I'm looking back and smiling at them now. You know, this is a, this is a fun one. I'm, I'm having fun with this now. That's the thing. I'm, I'm having fun with it now. Um, like I, I, I've, I've said before, I've been classically trained in, in all of this, in this sport. You know, coming up and watching guys like Sugar Rashad Evans and going with him to these media tours and, and these big, big fights, you know, um, I was able to get an inside look at what this could be to, out, to where I was able to dream and manifest what I wanted to be. So being up here and, and, and having these opportunities now, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm blessed and, um, you know, it feels great. I'm having fun. 
And obviously, since your first fight with him, you've since joined Trevor Whitman. He's also changed camps, and he said he's added a whole lot of new wrinkles to his game. So are you expecting a completely new Colby Covington, or is it like like what, what Tyson Fury's cor corner said when they fought Dante Wilder? Like, a fighter's always just going to go back to what got them to the dance, no matter how much they try to add this deep into their career. Yeah, I'm, I mean, obviously, you guys have saw what I've done because, you know, I've been fighting, you know, so you guys have seen that. Uh, for him, I can't necessarily say the same because knowing the kind of guy that he is, and I, we, like I said, we have mutual friends, so I get a good glimpse. I've, I've gotten a good glimpse of who this guy is outside of the cage. And judging by that, you know, I think um, he's the same asshole. And yeah, just at a new team. So at the end of the day, when you get in there with a lion like me and I hit you in the mouth, you're gonna to resort to what you know best and you're gonna throw whatever those coaches are saying out the window because you don't really give a shit because you're really an asshole. So. And finally, uh, Michael Chandler was in here earlier and he jokingly called you a narc and then he, he <laughs> obviously he was joking. He said he still considers you a good friend. Justin Gaethje said that even if he asked you for advice, it wouldn't even matter because they're still getting into a fist fight. So as someone who knows both men very well, what can fans expect in that fight? I'm not asking for a prediction, but yeah. just the fight in general. My predict, no, I'm playing. Um, <laughs> No, um, Michael Chandler's a you know very very good fighter, explosive fighter. You know it's one of reason one of the reasons me and him kind of bonded while he came down at H Kickboxing a few years back is the fact that we like to work, we like to train smart, and we like to train hard and often. And so me and him gravitated towards one another. And so yeah, I was able to get a good glimpse of of who he is as a competitor, and you know excellent fighter. Very good, hard-nosed fighter. It's so funny how similar these guys are. Um, Justin's just a, just a savage, really. The only word to describe him, this is a guy that kind of loves fighting. I'm being honest with you guys. I don't necessarily love fighting. I love to compete, but this guy just loves what he does. He eats, sleeps, and breathes it. So you guys can expect uh, just the fireworks. And... This is one of those fights to where if both of these men are standing after the, that third round, uh, you could tell that they're just, just nuts. Just madmen, they could definitely take a shot. Kamari, you, we spe mentioned Hamzat here, and you said, you know, you haven't got long left in this career. When people start bringing up names like him to you, is there a feeling of like, oh, a champion's work is never done? Like, you get rid of one guy, and there's already the next guy ahead of you? I mean, that's, that's how it is. Like, come on. After I get done with the fight, what, what did you guys do last time? I just put, sent Masvidal to the shadow realm and you guys are, so who's next? Is Kobe next? You know, like that's, that's what it is. It's always going to be that way. And if all champions, you know, especially some of the best champions in the world continue to listen to that, then basically all you guys want to see is me continue to be successful until I'm not successful. Then you guys can then put that stamp on it and say, ah, oh, he's washed up. He needs to leave, you know. I want to be that champion who does it on, I want to do it on my own time. You know, I like, like, like Habib. And, and I, I know a lot of people are, are, have been throwing a lot of shades, saying a lot of things about Habib leaving when he wanted to leave. That's how you do it. You know, even George St. Pierre, that's how you do it. You leave when you want to leave. You know, you don't let the sport retire you. So, yeah, whenever I feel like, you know, that time's there, um, it's time for me to go. We speak about you lapping the division now, and I think you're in this legacy building phase of your career where people are just kind of throwing any situation at you to see, oh, what can he rise to? You know, I saw you do an interview yesterday, like, oh, can you win another belt? For you personally, what builds more for your legacy? Lapping a division over and over again or winning a second title in a one-off? To me, I don't really... Let's be honest, I've, I've kind of done what there is to do in, in, in MMA, in UFC. You know, this Saturday, live on ESPN pay-per-view at Madison Square Garden. What's bigger than that? I've headlined pay-per-views before. The first event back with fans. And, and, and look how that looked, how that pay-per-view went. You know, fought Kobe the first time, T-Mobile Arena, headline that. You know, went all the way to Abu Dhabi, headline that. And Fight Island won. I mean, what is there to do in the sport? I've, I've done it all, you know. Um, you talk about legacy. Like, look what I've done to this point. You know, when, when I'm done and I walk away, guys are going to look back and say, wow, he was special, just like we've done with some of the greats. And so if I'm looking at legacy, I want to do something that's not been done before. You know, these guys don't really scare me anymore. I mean, of course, there is the fear of myself and not, you know, competing and not looking the way that I want to look. 
But what scares me is, is since when in history have we ever seen pound for pound in both combat sports at the, their prime go at it? We've never seen that. You know, wouldn't the world love to see that? I know I would. Kamara, to your left over here. Uh, you know, not to give anything away, but for your, the last fight with Colby, you kind of said, I'm going to keep it on the feet for the fans, throw down with them a bit. This time around, I'm getting the sense from you that maybe not having the same feeling. So, like I said, not to give anything away, but can we expect some wrestling in this one? What are we thinking? Listen, I'm better than this guy <laughs> in every way possible. I'm just better than him. And that's just one thing that I do well that I didn't realize until – you know, these wins started racking up. I'm like, ah, I kind of control these fights and where they take place and how they go. You know, let, let's work on that. And so, yeah, the fight's going to play out wherever I want him to play out. Like, obviously, if he wants to not take as much punishment, he's going to try to wrestle. Then he's going to realize very quickly, I'm a much better wrestler than him. Then he's going to have no choice but to stand. Well, if I want to take him down, I could have taken him down. And I can take him down if I want. So we'll have to see. The only thing is, uh, you know, like I said, that first one I wanted to, the world wouldn't have been satisfied if I hadn't done that to him. And so that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do that. This one, I'm going to be strategic, but <laughs> you can rest assured that I still want to do some harmful things to him. And I wanted to ask about your brother, Mohammed, who, you know, he's coming off a loss in the PFL. But, you know, that's always a big kind of thing for fighters, you know, to turn around and come back from that. So I'm just curious how you've kind of been helping him and, you know, given, you know, sharing advice and all that kind of thing going forward and what potential he has still in the sport. Yeah, I mean, that, that wasn't his first loss. You know, that was his second loss. You know, he lost before and he bounced back and he, he you know, he got some wins and then got that opportunity. Uh, so he's going to do the same. He, he right away, you start to realize, ah, maybe I'm not where I want to be yet. So let me get back to the drawing board. So since then, you know, he's really uh, made the move out to, uh, to Colorado, and he's uh, putting a lot of emphasis on his training. So, you know, we want to make him the, you know, the savage that he wants to be. So eventually he'll get there, and, and you guys will be talking to him and not me. All right, best of luck tomorrow. Tomorrow over here on your, uh, your right, you mentioned uh, pound for pound versus pound for pound. I assume you're talking about Canelo Alvarez, the pound for pound top boxer. Yes, absolutely. Since when have we ever seen the pound for pound mixed martial artists go up against the pound for pound boxer, both in their prime? Not when they're old or retired and you're trying to pull them back, both in their prime. I think that's something that um, I, I think the biggest ever in history. And that's what I'm looking to do. That's something that scares me. That's something that gets me up in the morning. That's something that I might risk leaving my daughter for another 12 weeks for. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. That's something that I'm looking at. And, you know, God willing, you know, this Saturday we do what we need to do. Then why not? Will you, will you actively try to make that fight happen if you beat Colby on Saturday? I mean, yeah. You know, pound for pound mixed martial artist in the world versus pound for pound boxer in the world promoted by the pound for pound Dana White. Why not? Why not? You know, why not? And you're, uh, I mean, coincidentally enough, you're actually going head to head with him. This week, I know. Saturday. We'll see who, uh, who does better. I mean, we're both in the business of entertainment nowadays. Um, he's going to entertain on the same night. So are we. We'll see who does better numbers. And then we're going to sit there and uh, we'll have a discussion with the pound for pound best promoter in the game, and Dana White, and we'll try to make something happen. Have you spoken to Dana about this? I'd like, have you expressed this wish to him? Yeah. You know, Dana's hearing about it now, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> He's hearing about it now. And that's the one thing that I love about Dana is if it makes money, makes sense. So uh, hopefully we have that conversation. Who wins that fight? You or Canelo? And you're talking, Me about, or Canelo. talking about boxing too, right? And boxing, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, come on now. <laughs> he wouldn't dare come in here. Let's be honest. You know, that's the thing is we have to pursue these guys because we're willing to take that risk. You know, I don't know if they're willing to pursue us. Um, so um, let's be honest. You know, that, like I said, there's a reason that scares me. That scares me because, um, you know, he's a master at his craft. And, you know, he's used to these boxers. He's used to the boxing speed and the boxing, you know, movements and things like that. We're different. You know, sometimes different could be good. What's wrong with giving him a different look? So, I, of course, it's a tall tree to climb, but, you know, we saw what happened the last time I was an underdog. Thanks, Mar. Thank you. You come right here on your left. 
Uh, Kamaru, talking about the numbers, um, I know you're looking at some boxing and making that big money, but you are approaching Anderson Silva's all-time mark of those 16 UFC victories in a row. How much would it mean to you to break that kind of mark and prove just like you're the generational talent here in this time? That's interesting, and I, I've said it before early on in, in some of these you know, press conferences. I don't really look at that. You guys, are, I find out when you guys tell me, hey, you're approaching this number and that number and this number. I don't look at that. I, earned, I learned a long time ago when I was one and one, and saying, shit, I just lost. I'm not undefeated anymore. And and having that talk with Rashad Evans and, and him telling me, just take it one fight at a time. So as long as I continue to take it one fight at a time, all these numbers continue to rack up and, and, and pile up. So that's all I'm doing. I'm not chasing anybody or I'm not trying to do this better than this guy or this guy. I'm doing it my way and I'm just getting one win at a time. So when I'm done, I want you guys to let me know how great I was. The Hispanic fans noticed that Kamar Usman's been rocking a Colombian national team jersey a lot. <laughs> are you a fan of the team? Are you just, you know, loving the community? Talk to me about that. Uh, of course, we love the Latin community. We always do. And uh, my girlfriend's Colombian, so, you know, of course, she's going to make you wear that thing. And, and it looked good on me. You see the colors, right? It was looking good on me. It was looking really good on me. So, uh, of course, we rock it. Welcome to the club. Thank you. Come on over here on your right. I was going to ask real quick. So you obviously started out as a wrestler. Striking has come leaps and bounds and leaps and bounds. At what point did the striking really click for you, or has it? Is there still some thing that you're looking to achieve with that that hasn't happened, or have you felt that it's just I've got there to where I want it to be? No, I'm always growing. There's always room for improvement. Um, the thing is the striking's always been there. You know, it's just um, just going out there and having it come to fruition. Like, we all know that this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It takes time to really learn and evolve in the sport, something that my, my little brother is learning as well. It takes time to get there. You know, I came in as a wrestler having some of the best foundation. And then, of course, I went to a camp where I had one of the best teachers out there at H Kickboxing with Henry Hoof to teach me that foundation of how to punch a kick. And now having Trevor Whitman really fine-tune some of those intricate details to produce the results that I've been producing. I mean, it's just a perfect storm. I'm blessed and I'm thankful for, you know, the places that I've been with the coaches that I've been and, and the place that I am in life. I mean, this Saturday, headline Madison Square Garden. UFC 268 live on ESPN pay-per-view. You don't want to miss it. Go get that. But there was no particular fight where you felt, oh, this feels really good now. Um, if I had to say one, I would say uh, I fought Sean Strickland in, I believe, Buffalo. And I believe it was, it was a, like a, a, little, it was a little storm back and forth. It started when I fought Wale Alves in Brazil. A lot of people didn't know, but uh, I had torn cartilage in my ribs and, and I couldn't wrestle the last like three weeks. But uh, I couldn't pull out of the fight because I was instructed, you can't pull out of this fight. And so I had to fly all the way to Brazil and fight this guy without my best, in my strongest tool in my, in my toolbox, which is wrestling. So I remember in that fight, I knew I had to keep the fight standing because I couldn't wrestle. So this guy doesn't find out that one kick in my ribs, I might be out. So I had to stay on my feet and I'm on my feet. And then I realized in that first round, these guys can't stay with me on my feet. They're afraid. They think I'm going to wrestle the whole time. Why not stay up? And then towards the end of that first round, you can go back and watch that fight. He was just done. He was gassed. I didn't really throw that many strikes, but he was so gassed because he thought I was going to wrestle the whole time. I looked at him, and I spoke Portuguese to him, and I told him, <laughs> I know you're not tired already. We just started. So from that moment on, I said, you know what? I can do what I want to do in here. I don't have to wrestle these guys. So in the Sean Strickland fight, we all know how well, how good of a striker Sean Strickland is. I just wanted to just let it fly. And I'm doing all kinds of tricks. I'm doing a super double punch. I'm doing all kinds of things, having fun in there. And at that moment, I think I realized, you know, it is what I make it in here, that I can do whatever I want. Come on over here on your right. One more. We'll take one more. 
So we saw you courtside the Knicks game the other night. Tell us what your experience was like. It was great. Um, it's one of those things with me is I don't – I'm in this trans state of mind to where I don't really take things in too much because I have such high expectations. And for me, the journey's never over. So I have such big goals and high expectations to where I don't really sit there and just really relish and enjoy moments as much as I probably should. So I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm – it's just a game to me. I'm watching the, the basketball game. And I'm sitting next to Tracy Morgan. I'm sitting next to Chris Rock, Bill Bellamy, D. Nice, and I'm. And at one point, it was like, these are legends that I grew up watching, and I'm sitting on the floor next to them. But then I snap out of it, and I got in the back, and then I got goosebumps. Like, oh shit, this is where I'm gonna walk out when I fight. So, um, you know, it's it's an amazing. It's been an amazing roller coaster. You know, I'm blessed to be in this position. I'm blessed to be here. I don't take it for granted, and you know when I'm done, I think, yeah. Then I'll start to be like, you know what, I did that, yeah. So, you know, tell my brother, you know, take pictures now, take a lot of pictures. You know, my man Patty, take a lot of pictures because I might want to see them later. And last one for me. Uh, obviously, your friend Francis Ngannou was in your corner last time around. Uh, first of all, is he going to be here this time around? And secondly, what did you make of the situation with Francis that occurred over the summer? You know, when they created the interim belt, were you surprised by that? Um. It's a tough situation to be in. Um, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes um, that, you know, a lot of people don't know about. And, and we all wish that we could sit in those rooms with the powers that may be and really understand what, you know, a fighter or other promotions is going through and dealing with. So it's, it's you know, for me personally, as, as, a, as a brother of his and, and as a friend, it was tough for me. To, it's tough for me to watch, you know, but... It seems like things might be looking up now because, it, you know, that fight's been scheduled. And, and let's I'll be honest, you know, we all know who the heavyweight champion of the world is. You know, like, no disrespect to Gon. He, he's an incredible competitor. We see what that heavyweight's doing. And so until they step in there and they really duke it out, we know who the heavyweight champion of the world is. All right, thanks, tomorrow. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.